Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. Well, as you can see in front of you, we've got kind of a selection of knives. What these are, these are all Rough Rider flippers. Now, if you've been with any, been with the channel any time at all, you know I pretty much, I preach almost about Rough Rider traditionals. These are just, to me, they're, at, they're an absolutely fantastic value knife. If you're into traditionals, you like collecting traditionals, or if you're just thinking about getting into traditionals, Rough Rider is a perfect way to do it because you can check out a lot of patterns, a lot of different covers, handle material, and, and not break the bank doing it. I mean, bone, micarta, I, I mean, just on and on and on. Colors, flavors, you name it. It's pretty much there. But what I really didn't know a whole lot about was Rough Riders Flipper line. There are definitely not as many of the flippers as there are the traditionals. Not even remotely close. So, I've had this one for a while. This is the Rough Rider Thin Man Stiletto. Uh, RR 1859. Had this one for a while. It was in another video recently. Um, I gave a shout out to my boy Choi, Choi Boy for sending this along with another knife that I had bought from him and bought, I guess, from him. And okay, I had one. One is not a sample size. So I went out, I bought a couple more. I bought these two, the RR 1980 and the 1983. Well, actually, when I was trying to, when I was trying to buy them, I had I believe it was these two or these two. I think it was these two, in my cart. And for some reason, as long as I had this knife and the T-shirt that I was buying in the cart at the same time, it wouldn't let me finish my order. It was just a bug, whatever. So I ended up picking this one and I ordered these two and then I had talked to Melina when I was having that issue and then she ended up sending this one in the last batch of knives that's the 2145 so I have four knives here now so this to me is a decent sample size now if these are all four good knives is that going to mean that you there's might not be a rogue one out there somewhere? Not at all. I can only speak about the four I have in front of me right now. But out of these four, I think I can get a good idea of what Rough Rider Flippers are all about. We're just going to take a quick look at them. This is kind of just like a quick look, first impressions type thing. As I said, this is the Thin Man Stiletto. It's a liner lock. 440A stainless steel. All of these have 440A stainless, just like the traditionals. This one is actually titanium coated though. Aluminum handle. Tip down pocket clip on this one. Uh, this guy runs on Teflon washers. Lockup. Lockup is a bit late on this one. It's looking at about 50-60%. Then again, we're talking about a $10 knife. Now, why would I show you these knives? None of these knives are very expensive, guys. N no Rough Rider is. But why would I show you these? Well, if you need to scratch that knife by an itch, but you don't have a lot of cash, this might, maybe, might be a decent option. Just to buy a knife that you can play around with. These knives are absolutely perfect. The 440A stainless, perfect for learning how to sharpen. Perfect for that. And I'll get into it a little bit more when we get down here as to the options in sharpening her. The, yeah, we'll go with options. <laughs> but not a bad little knife, this one. Everything's chamfered pretty well. 
There's no real sharp spots on it. It looks pretty well put together. Now this one I have had for a little while. Solid. This one I don't carry a lot. This one actually is the letter opener of the house. Works perfect for that. But a pretty solid little knife. Next one we're going to take a look at is the 1980. Again, like I said, 448 stainless. You've got that two-tone kind of black washed satin on the grind. Multiple deployment options. You have the thumb studs. Thumb studs are set decently back. Out of the cutting path, you might get a little bit right there. It's a flipper as well. Liner lock. Now, not overly stout liners. Let's see if I can get some light on this one. Let's see here where we're sitting as far as lock up. Lock up again. That's not too bad. That's probably, what do we say, 30, 35, 30 percent maybe? Yeah, I'll give it 30 percent on the lockup. G10 handle. This one is tipped down only as well. Pocket clip. Pocket clip's got some darn good retention on it. That liner does stick up a little bit. Does not affect my grip at all. Um, you can kind of use that as a forward finger choil. Jimping. Jimping is okay. Not the best, not the worst, but it's all right. Uh, you can get up on that finger choil. You're pretty close to that blade, though. But it could be usable. Grip-wise... I mean, the pocket clip is in tip-down configuration, so it's not going to impede my grip too much. I can feel it down towards the bottom, but it's not bad. Full four-finger grip. Again, everything is chamfered. Really well. Yeah, I cut myself. It happens. Everything seems to be chamfered pretty well. Big old lanyard slot there. But this one, the 1980, $7.99. $7.99. I think that knife's worth $7.99 all day long. Again, these aren't going to be knives that you're probably going to be able to go and just beat the living tar out. That's not what they're made for. Might have to try it just to see what happens with one of these. But overall, <laughs> that's a pretty darn good $8 knife in my opinion. Sit there. There you go. This is the 1983. And it's just a bunch of different options. Like I said, aluminum, G10... Stainless liners. This one is hammered aluminum on the handle. Two-tone, gray, black. This one is right-hand tip up carry, which is nice. Again, two-tone blade. Nice flat, nice swedge. Kind of a, uh, a drop sheep. We want to call it that. Decent amount of belly on it. Um, thumb studs again. They're in the path a little bit. Not too terrible, but a little. Sharpening choil. Definitely not a finger choil. I mean, you could cut a better one in there. 
if you wanted to. Grip-wise, in the hand, again there, I can get a full four-finger grip on it and actually have a little bit left over. Pocket clip. I can feel it a little bit. Not bad. But again, everything is chamfered. No sharp edges on it. I mean, you can really tell liner does stay a little pr stand a little proud. Good access to the liner. The liner does not impede my grip once again. Oh, it's a lockup on this one. Oh, lockup. It's kind of bright. I gotta look back here, guys. I'm sorry. Um, it's probably fifty percent. Yeah, it's probably fifty percent. Oh, but the one thing, kind of. Both of these, the 1980 and the 1983, the action on them, <laughs> both run on bearings. Snaps out. Decent drop. Let's see. Well, okay. I'm trying to fail it. I, I really am. I'm trying to fail this. <laughs> okay. That one's not easy to fail. Again, this one. This one's a little bit more drop shutty. Great action on it. Just a tiny, tiny bit of blade play in that one. What's the centering like? Centering is... Maybe a little to the clip side on this one. But the action, again, runs on bearings. That one doesn't want to stay, does it? This one, not, not as drop shutty as the other one. This one does not have any blade play. That one had just, oh, a tiny bit. Tiny bit. Might have to adjust the pivot on that one a little bit. But just super smooth actions on them. And the last one I have is the 2145. Now, this one is all stainless. That cleaver style blade. And if you can look there, pretty much looks like a true compound grind. Again, two-tone blade, kind of that black wash, satin on the flat. Backside, you do not have the fuller. You only have the fuller on the one side. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, I did spidey flick it. Nah, I can't. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it spidey flick that time. Not great. I'm not the greatest spidey flicker, guys. <laughs> Trust me. These guys will tell you that. Action is... Not bad. This one also runs on bearings. This one's a frame lock. So we have liner lock... Liner lock, frame lock. I uh, didn't have, I don't know if. They didn't have a, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my own head, guys. You got kind of this stonewashed blue on this one, on the 2145. That cleaver blade. 
that was the one thing on budget knives these if there's a hole in the blade that's one thing to pay attention to a lot of them have that fresh stamped feeling this one does not it's been it's had attention paid to it and made sure that it doesn't have that fresh stamped feeling got a little bit of a ramp there again forward finger choil now that one works pretty good get a pretty darn decent grip on this one this one feels really good in hand again it's had the attention paid to it I mean the screws aren't recessed on the clips that type of thing but man just a fantastic fantastic I don't know guys let me know down in the comments what do you think this one oh I forgot to tell you what that one cost that one costs I think nine dollars yep ten dollars nine ninety nine I'm sorry this one $9.99, the $19.83, this one, this one, whew, it's a bank breaker, guys, $14.99, be careful, and, and I say that in jest, of course, but you buy all, you buy all these knives and spend less than 40 bucks, you know, could you spend 40 bucks on a CJRB or something like that, I'm sure you could, but again, like I said, if you're got to scratch that knife by an itch and don't want to spend a whole lot of money and get a fairly decent knife I think the Rough Rider Flipper is a decent option guys I really do tell me down in the comments what do you think do you agree do you disagree let me know I'd like to hear what you think thanks a lot for watching guys checking out some of the Rough Rider Flippers with me as always like, subscribe, leave me a comment. You know I love talking to you. Until next time, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.